Founded in 1991 by Courtney and Stephen J. Ross, Ross School is an international lab school devoted to changing the way education meets the future. Raw School provides a unique and holistic educational experience that develops students into global citizens. Cultural history is the core of the Ross Spiral curriculum. It is taught chronologically through the grades as a dynamic system expanding in complexity. All domains of study are integrated through cultural history. Each grade, composed of a series of integrated units, focuses on a particular historical period and theme. The spiral provides a cohesive architecture for analysis of the past as a dynamical system and enables students to more fully understand the present while envisioning the future. With interdisciplinary studies, students learn there is more than one perspective, that we can begin to discuss across disciplines how things relate, because an embodied experience says that knowledge are not abstract, detached facts, that knowledge is shared experiences where we create common meanings in the world. That's the narrative approach. In starting the school, I thought, well, what do you do if you start a school? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to collect the wise people on the planet to come and help inform the process of creation? Every summer, we have an amazing opportunity to come together to Ross School for professional development. So we have economists, and we have neuroscientists, and we have anthropologists, and it's just a great way to look at this model. The very idea that, th that there are connections is a more difficult idea than you might think. We work in these relationships here. Ross is a lab school. We're used to working with mentors. We're used to learning from scholars and then taking it to the classroom. With the nervous system, you've got something new that leads to something that emerges that is very important that we can call behavior and mind. For my senior project, I explored this concept, emergence, in terms of the human body, studying how it is built up from atoms to systems. We want to equip students to understand and participate in the world of the future. The way we've been trained is to break into our specialties so one needs to move up to a satellite level and in the interdisciplinary units you foreground that way of thinking that you think and fuse not in just simple melodies. A higher level understanding of the world we live in and that's the purpose of our education and that's why we have to foreground systems in the Ross School. Systems thinking is integral to the curriculum. It allows students to process increasingly complex concepts and articulate their understanding. In the Golden Matrix Elective, we are examining the passage of knowledge through time and incorporated it into our website. We're standing on the crest of one of the seven hills of Istanbul, once known as Constantinople. Hi, Mark Tompkins. As part of professional development, Faculty from kindergarten to grade 12, as well as students from Ross Innovation Lab, took part in a year-long online course on complex dynamical systems. Systems thinking, a new way of thinking about world cultural history, current events, and the systems that we live in using the metaphors of complex dynamical systems theory. We've learned how to use all sorts of digital tools to span different geographic locations and time zones to make certain that as much of it as we can where the dialogue is critical that we do that in real time. We've been watching videos of him teaching about nodes, systems, links, and then going to a live Skype conference with him. For the culmination of the course, faculty applied a full systems analysis to curricular units and developed net logo models. The outcome for this whole process is that all the teachers involved are going to have a unit that's intended to bring these ideas about complex dynamical systems and take it to the students. The project should represent a system in your curriculum that you're really interested in. You start with the story and the technical content, and then converge on the net logo modeling last. I think we need one that goes all the way around, and that's seasonal change. Do another one here, and we're going to connect them by a big flow. This particular pandemic swept the world so quickly. Swept the world so, so quickly. quickly. And, it, and it basically typifies the theme of the grade, which is the archetype of speed and the whole idea that you're moving 
through transnationalism ultimately to an emergence of globalization. If you itemize these different variables, then that can be a launch pad to the next activity in which we ask them to think about a different phenomenon, anti-colonialism or the global economy. The links between them are the possibility of infection. We have infection on a slider here. At first, plague was spread by contact. We'll see when it's spread pneumatically. As faculty created systems curricula, Innovation Lab students developed their own models. Currently, we're working on our NetLogo projects. So if you guys can see that, a very basic representation of what's going to be modeled. Oh, you know what I think it has to be? Create links with other cedars. Yeah. The question is, are there any cedars left? Yeah. Don't the cedars log off as soon as... Some do. Yeah. yeah. That's actually nice right there. And they're actually putting them into practice in their presentations for their culture history classes and geometry classes. My project is how origami and geometry correlate. So for my year-long project, I'm planning on creating a kusudama butterfly similar to a systems course that, that I'm taking currently. It's chaotic because it, like first it goes in a straight line and then it just begins to spiral around and around. Triangles are like a bunch of like smaller nodes being um, combined to create a complex dynamical system. I'm working with the science called cellular automata. I thought to take this further than Conway, the original man who did the game of life. We built sliders so that you could alter the rules. So if you didn't want to say just do Conway's game of life, you want to do an altered set with another altered set. What would the interactions be? And this is completely chaotic. During the spring term, teachers implemented their curricular models in the classroom. Probably the percentage of people that recovered is that's about right. I think 10% is about right. The infectiousness, though, of pneumonic plague, you know something about this, that was probably higher. Well, it was, it killed 33% of the population. Oh, okay. So that's another way to look at it. Oh, here we go. That actually kind of works. I think I got it. One of the good signs about the fact that the plague spread so quickly was that ideas, materials, goods and services could spread rapidly. So this is a reflection not of sickness of society, but actually the health and complexity of society. Anybody have trade routes? If you want to play money on your trade routes, you can put them down right here. The Machiavelli game, that was a completely chaotic thing because it was tracking relationships, and relationships are completely chaotic. As I read chapters of The Prince, they would come in and they would play the simulation and they would learn the wisdom from Machiavelli and then see it applied within the game. You're all nodes in a system, all you are city-states working with and against each other. And there's links between your, each other, but how weak are the links? We study the migration system of butterflies. If our problem at the beginning of the year was that people came along and pulled out some milkweed, what else is affected? Who else felt like their string got really loose just when now? When the monarch butterflies lay their eggs, they lay them on milkweed. If there's no more milkweed, the eggs will fall off. In 20 years, the pond level has not been this low. That's where you're going to see plants that have been dormant. So do you think that early humans, when they'd have low water levels like this, they would come to these locations and gather exotic plants? If you were an early human, where would you settle? And if, if this was your area, where would you make shelter? And what seasons do you think you would want to be here? Early humans would have to move to different places of uh, the every seasons. season. Everything has to be able to work together to have an ecosystem. Everything is connected. What's the chances of them carrying a deadly virus like that to other places. You could now travel across the world really quickly, and if the symptoms last for a long time, then obviously an infected soldier could go from Fort Riley, Kansas, and go to France. If you have a number value that you want to be able to change, we use sliders for duration of the flu and recovery rate. You're kind of playing the what if game. What if the flu started in Africa? What if everybody had the same chance of recovery? Anti-colonial movements, the global economy, world wars. We want you to do a diagram for one of those phenomena. Airborne divisions. I feel like that, should, that might want to go down to a stop because it's so dependent on the weather. Right. That's the variable though. Yeah, exactly. So what are the variables that would say that that person would, would may or may not agree mm -hmm. with what Marx is saying? It's, it's kind of connected to this, but not as like downwardly connected. Is it? I mean, that probably has to do with economic competition too, right? Yeah. Everything's connected. <laughs>
I began with an idea, which then became affected by these outside factors. Now I see it as an evolution of a system. To really have this perspective and mode of thinking really sheds new light onto topics that we've looked at in the same way for a very long time. I can recognize more systems in the world. Our world is characterized by a complexity which is always on the increase. We want to equip students to understand and participate in the world of the future. Because we have such radical exponential change right now. All the problems that exist right now, they are part of a bigger system. So we study complex dynamical systems, and if we can perform integral studies, then multiple domains of art, history, mathematics, literature, all come together. It's the imagination of the student and the fascination with complexity will just take hold.